Let me bring in uh, some other attorneys we have with us today to discuss. Criminal defense attorney Bill Brennan, trial attorney Misty Maris, and Manhattan criminal defense attorney Stacy Schneider. Stacy was also a former contestant on The Apprentice and knows the judge, as well as uh, District Attorney Alvin Bragg, as well as Mr. Trump, obviously, from her time on The uh, Apprentice. Uh, let's start with you, Bill Brennan, uh, because right now this uh, testimony from Gary Farrow, uh, who worked for Michael Cohen, uh, is, looks like it's leading up towards evidence of this LLC uh, corporation, which some might call a shell corporation, to hide the payment that he made to Stormy Daniels on Trump's behest. That is the allegation anyway, Mr. Brennan. Uh, hello, Jake. And uh, I agree with the former prosecutor who said, you know, you may want to uh, end the week on, especially, I think they're not in session Monday, if, if I'm correct about that. That's right. Three-day weekend. Ended on uh, innocuous testimony, especially following up the 34-year-old, 34-year uh, employee, uh, the administrative assistant, who apparently spoke in glowing terms of the defendant, said he was respectful, he was wonderful to work for. I don't think you want the jury, if you're the prosecutor, if I'm prosecuting this case, uh, left with that to mull over for three days. Plus, you need this type of kind of, uh, you know, boilerplate innocuous testimony to corroborate the later uh, allegations uh, of Cohen and the papers that will go in. So it's, it's not going to uh, always be as salacious as Pecker was. And you have to fill in with these, you know, fill in the blanks witnesses. Stacy, uh, tell us about Rona Graff. Uh, do you know her at all? Have you encountered her at all? What is your experience with her? She obviously yes. was tr uh, Trump's longtime assistant who testified for about half an hour earlier today. Yes, Rona is the loveliest woman on the planet. When I was on the show, if the we wanted to stay in touch with Donald Trump after the show, the person we were told to contact is Rona. She was indeed his gatekeeper. She had an amazing relationship with Donald Trump. I always wondered how she worked for such a difficult boss. She was always pleasant. Um, and I think this was very helpful after David Pecker's testimony, which was really damaging for Donald Trump about all this alleged nefarious conduct to have somebody soften him like Rona, who still, you know, who's cared about him all these years. I understood I wasn't in the courtroom, but um, after she got up and, and left to leave the testimony, I think uh, Donald Trump stood up and touched her hand. And that's a big difference from what his behavior during jury selection. Yeah. When the jurors were entering the room, he didn't even stand up for them, but he stood up for Rona today. So Misty Maris, let me tell you some of the stuff going on in the, in the courtroom uh, right now. Um, in, on, on October 13th, 2016 email, and again, the significance of October 2016, A, right before the presidential election, B, this is during the, the hotbed of activity about making sure that Stormy Daniels' story uh, or allegation does not get out there. Um, an October 13th email, um, Michael Cohen, uh, need account opened for Michael Cohen. This is from Gary Farrow. Need account opened for Michael Cohen. Immediately he wants no address on the checks. Uh, he also notes that an LLC not having an address is not unusual. Farrow says that Cohen called to set up an account for Resolution Consultants LLC. I love the fact that in any, any, any time there's any story about allegations of misdeeds, the LLC always has the most boring, innocuous name. And that's one for the history books, Resolution Consultants LLC. I'm already, already falling asleep. But, I've, but obviously, uh, it was anything but boring what was going on, Misty. Right, certainly seeking a resolution, right? So, so <laughs> there's a couple of really important points here. Number one, Jake, you nailed it, the timing. Remember, this is all part of the prosecution's narrative that this is right around the time the Access Hollywood tape has become public. Trump team is in panic mode to get rid of the Stormy Daniels story. So that's all going to speak to some of the elements that tie this payment directly to the election. Now, the other piece is every single document and communication and transaction relating to this payment is obviously a key and critical part of the case. And to have these shell come Companies. This is all speaking to that idea of a conspiracy, trying to mask these payments as something that they're not. And remember, that is a fundamental part of the prosecution's case as far as this all being 
unlawful conduct because the payments themselves aren't unlawful. It's that were they properly reported, were they related to the campaign, were they related to the election? So all of this testimony, while foundational, authenticating documents, really, really important to the merits of the prosecution's case. Let me call on my favorite, uh, my, my fellow, rather, Philadelphian, uh, Mr. Brennan, um, and permit me a moment of geographical snobbery because Delaware is being raised. The jury is seeing pages of documents that show Resolution Consultants LLC was created by Michael Cohen as a Delaware entity. Uh, we like to make fun of New Jersey and Philadelphia. And, and Bill, maybe you can explain why Delaware is always where these shady corporations are headquartered. I can, Jake, because uh, Delaware many years ago uh, crafted uh, laws of incorporation were very favorable uh, for those who wish to incorporate. So that's why we see, I think per capita, uh, it's the, out of the uh, 50 states, it's the number one. Uh, but I'd, I'd just like to respond to a couple of the comments that I heard. Sure. It's probably just the DNA uh, that I have being a defense lawyer. You know, you have to remember that the defense here is likely to be, and I think uh, we've seen a preview, is that Payments, if they were made, and if they were made to these uh, individuals, Ms. Clifford and uh, Ms. McDougall, they were paid to uh, avoid a very embarrassing and shameful uh, scenario that uh, the defendant would encounter with his wife and family. And, uh, you know, that, that sells to people. And I think that when you uh, look at, I wasn't in court today, you know, I just know what I've read and what I've heard from, from you guys, but uh, when you think about this uh, prosecution, they have to get it to the other crime to, to make the felony stick. They have to show that if these things were done, they weren't to avoid uh, personal problems. They were to affect either campaign finance laws or the election. And I, I thought I read or heard that Mr. Pecker stumbled into some type of meeting in the White House where Director Comey and Secretary Pompeo were there. And uh, the prosecution seems to be saying, well, you're in the meeting with two big officials. I mean. That doesn't make him a co-conspirator. That makes him Forrest Gump. I mean, you know, the guy's stumbling around and walks into a meeting. That's proof of nothing. So I, I don't know that Pecker's te testimony was that damaging so far. I, I suspect they'll fill in the gaps or attempt to fill them in with Cohen. And I suspect that we'll see a much more aggressive line of cross-examination with him. So jurors, jurors are being shown emails right now between Cohen and Farrow setting up a bank account for Resolution Consultants, LLC. Everyone stick with me. We're close to wrapping for the weekend.